Okay, man. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Great? Nice, nice. So for those who don't know, uh, Maddie was uh, saying that before, but uh, the first API days was in Paris in 2013. And that's the first time I had a talk there. And it was a room where it was probably a fifth of this one with very, very low ceiling. But that was the beginning of API days, and then it went global. So it's amazing to see what the team did over, over the last uh, six, seven years. So I would say a really good applause of what, what they've been building, what, how they went global. So today, uh, we are going to go very high on what's happening and why that's happening at the API level, this massive shift that is impacting all the infrastructures or the cloud native architectures to support different products, to support different kind of consumers. And we go, and I thought about it, and I thought about that if I have to say it in a word, probably decentralized will, will take a lot of it of what's happening in the space and that, what that means and why. Why we're going to a decentralized world, why we need API infrastructure that is decentralized, okay? So we go through this. Um, so let's start with what's happening today and the next 10 years. And the first thing is really we are going to have about 500 billion, 500 billion things connected, okay? 500 billion things connected. This is, will happen quite soon, and it's already happening. There's already billion connected, but it's exploding. So this is creating a massive shift. There is a lot of devices that are becoming smart. All the cars that you see around will become smart car. Basically, they will become server on wheels. They will become computer on wheels. Fridge, uh, Samsung fridge, you know, Tesla cars. All of that is getting connected, and it will be a massive explosion. We're right at that inflection point. So this is a big high level shift that's happening and, and billions of consumers will use those devices. And so what that is producing? Well, let's then go back to, I don't know who recognized uh, this movie. What is this movie? One or two? <laughs> um, so what do you see in this? When you see those kind of futuristic movies, what, what do you actually see in it? What are you seeing? Advertising? Very smart advertising. What else do you see? Flying cars, right? Very high skyscrapers. Uh, obviously, a lot of humanity, a lot of humanity. But really, if you dig down to, uh, what do you really see? It's a lot of information moving. It's probably invisible but it's a lot of information behind the scene that is moving. That's the world we're going to. You can see another movie, you can take minority report, and you can see on top of that, a lot of information in flight. So this is a massive trend. And this trend is a data in motion. And usually, historically, uh, data can be usually in three states. They can be in use, data can be at rest, or they can be in motion. And for the last maybe 20 years, we have been building software for the first two, data in use, and data at rest. Database company, analytics company, um, there's been very little on the data in motion side. But this is because we're right at the right time where data in motion I think would be more important than anything else. Data is valuable when it's moving. Once you arrive at destination, you lose the value. You speak with Alexa, Alexa go and retrieve some information, it gives you back. In that moment it's valuable. Once you arrive and you got the answer, it's not valuable anymore. So information in flight will be way more valuable and it will be way more intense than data in use or data at rest. So this is another big shift that is happening. That will take over, and it will take over in a massive way, and there will be a lot of companies being built on this, and a lot of business that will be on data in motion. So information in flight, that's a big trend that um, is happening at massive scale, and, and it just keeps growing, and this is one of the main reasons why the infrastructure is going decentralized, because things and device and services, including the, the, the microservice transition, are not anymore centralized. They are going to decentralize and different parts and different software and different teams. So this is a massive trend. Number two is, has cloud went mainstream? We built for cloud native, sure, but also we have 30 years of history on building software in every way. And it's funny, because we have probably spent the last 
20, 30 years to put IT inside companies, we're going to spend the next 30 ripping it up. And, <laughs> and, but this is something you have to live for the next decades. And so you're going cloud native, but as a company has, let's say, 100 years history, you still have to work with a lot of other environments that have been part of that and have been part of the history and the decision and the IT decisions of the company for the last 20, 30. So you live in this hybrid world always while you're building new things that are cloud native. And cloud native, there's a lot of definition for that, um, but who knows what cloud native, so what would be the, the one of the mainstream definitions of cloud native? What is cloud native? containers, dynamic orchestrations, microservices. This is, those three things make architecture cli cloud native. If you are using those three primarily, you're building cloud native architecture or cloud native software, okay? So this is number two though. It requires even more decentralization because you have workloads on, on all the machine, you have workloads in the cloud, you have workloads on multi-cloud. Things are really spread out in a lot of different ways with a lot of different technologies, okay? So the hybrid, we talk about it, but uh, in the context of APIs, obviously uh, are important also what it means hybrid services, right? You have uh, different protocols, you have different architectures, but also the services are, are changing a little bit. When, when, when we started uh, looking, um, working with APIs, it was really that days where the transition was massive from SOAP to REST. And, and it's still going very strong, and nowadays, I have to say, well, there is, there is a lot of more than this, right? There is GraphQL, there is Kafka Streams, uh, there is gRPC for, for, uh, for uh, east and west traffic for lower latency. And I think there will be more and more over time. Uh, TCP is having a comeback for uh, higher performance. And so it's not just RESTful API, it's, it's a shift in protocols, it's a shift in, in how those services get delivered. And so technologies are also changing and it's becoming hybrid as well. That's also a change that you see. You don't just build RESTful APIs, you will build also gRPC endpoint, uh, you will slice and dice REST with GraphQL, uh, you will use TCP, you run Kafka streams on the queue. So at the end you wanna work with a lot of different protocols, a lot of different kind of highways, and it's not just RESTful. And this also creates a lot of more complexity and it creates a little bit more of a decentralized world when you work with different, with different protocols and all this real time information that is always moving. Number three, as we go through the couple, all the legacy that have been running for the last 20, 30 years into a lot of piece of softwares, boom. You have a thousand, you have a millions, you have a billions of services. And this is a massive shift because now companies, they don't have to manage an API anymore at the edge. They still have to do that. But now they have hundreds, they have a thousand and more internally, which creates a whole different level of complexity. And this is how software talks to each other is through endpoints. Rather than REST, they're gRPC. But this creates a, a total massive uh, complexity in how you manage, how you govern, how you secure thousands of APIs, not just one or two at the umbrella level. So this is the third shift. So you can see um, here, you know, we went from um, product experience that were primarily website based. Uh, you can see, you know, you can go back and look at eBay 2005 and all you had to do, you go on the website, you consume, you buy products. And, and that was fine to have a static monolith infrastructure behind the scene because also the, the way you were serving your product were kind of static. And then has 2008, boom. Steve Jobs goes on stage, actually to a stage that is not very far from this one, is right there, it's probably 50 meters the other way, and announced the iPhone. And once announced the iPhone, there is now a new platform that consumers start to use your product and your services. And then there is the iPad, and then there is Android, and then there is uh, a lot of other devices that start to consume, so that created this a complex demand created a shift in the market on how we build software and software start to adapt and start to have way more dynamic, has to be fast, has to be shapeless because you have to deliver it to thousands of different devices. Think about Netflix, right? They have, in the early days they had to support thousands of different TVs. Um, and that's created a, a really 
shift in how you build software, so you get decentralized, you get dynamic, there is way more information in Fly, you have a lot of services, a lot of endpoints, and you can see how the velocity grow. But all of that, what it means is that as you have more and more services, you're actually having more and more APIs, because that's how talk software talks. That's the social layer of software. It's a mission-critical need. And so you need also technology like an API gateway, uh, way more today than what you just needed five years ago, because you have thousands of endpoints that need to be managed and secure. So shift at the consumer level, which created a shift at the infrastructure level, which also created a shift of what technology we, we use. And technology that have been there for maybe 10 years, they kind of get reshaped under this dimension. And they have a way more massive needs than before. So to recap, information in flight, that's a massive trend. Uh, and it just keeps growing, growing. We're going to have 500 billion devices connected. We go for cloud, but also we still have to manage a lot of hybrid for the next 10, 20 years. And third, we don't have any more one or two APIs. Eventually, we're going to have 100 and 1,000 APIs to manage. So when we think about building that, that's how we have to think about also what, what this infrastructure will look like and how we can also manage and monitor it all. So because of that, API management is dead. I don't know. This is a very provocative statement. And uh, there is probably a lot of folks there that are selling API management. But uh, it's, it, what it means is that it's evolving. Okay? It's not the one that we've been knowing for the last 10 years where most of the companies have been acquired, they're dead, or they stopped growing. And there is a reason for that. They're all born before containers. They're all born before microservices took really over. They're all born before serverless. They're all born before Kubernetes was open source. So they are born for that legacy war where things were static. And it's a great uh, use case for those. But software did change, needs to be fast, needs to be dynamic, has to be super lightweight. Um, you can't turn a, a gigantic API management flat on top of a Kubernetes pod. And, and so all of that created an evolution of how we see the market going. And I think the whole notion of API management has been a good market, but it's been there and has to evolve. And maybe we'll have a different name five years from now. Uh, you know, there will be a new guy in the quadrants. But that's what we're going through. It's, this is kind of a small thing compared to what's happening in the market. And it's that thing that it was pre-Kubernetes, pre-containers. Now you are, you're building more of an information broker for the 21st century. And, and you have also to do um, securing east-west traffic, which has nothing to do with API management at all. Uh, delivery controllers like load balancers, which is what used to be a market standalone in itself, like F5, is kind of getting merged into also API gateways because they provide load balancer by default anyhow for free if it's open source. So there is overconversion also on markets as well. So this is kind of like looking 2010 when I see this name. Of course, it's a good thing, but it's evolving. And, and what we're going through is, is building really an information broker for the 21st century, which includes API management functionality, no-brainer, table stake, but it's much more than that. And <clears throat> this is how a company eventually will look like. You can think about it. Once you have a thousand services, actually the connection between those services, they're more dense than, than all those dots. You look a lot like a nervous system. And that's how an enterprise eventually will evolve. You have 100,000 employees, uh, 20,000 in R&D. They will build, uh, deprecate, uh, launch new services every day, every week. And it will be really fast moving. But that's how every company will look like. So, and by the way, that happened in nature. We went from single seller to multi seller. It becomes, started to become smarter. So enterprise, the way they also become smarter is by really building those kind of architectures. We go from dump pipes to neural networks. That's where the world is going, because every company will become to become eventually an AI company in some shape or form. And how you do that, you have to build a nervous system behind your scene. So all that creates a lot of problems. Uh, it's like your nervous system, right? Uh, how you stay healthy. That's uh, that's something you always want to check on. Uh, what's what's going on? What's what's happening into into your health? Uh, how you get efficiency? how you get operational efficiency. So those three key, if you think about it, are keys that are enterprises asking for and companies are asking for how you build this. Okay, I have all these APIs. How do I observe them, both internally and externally? How do I manage them? How do I see them? 
what is the operational efficiency so I don't reinvent the wheels over and over again when I have a thousand of APIs? How I know that the team in this region is not doing the same work than this team in this other part of the world? And, and you need this really nervous system to understand uh, what's happening in any edge of your company. So really how you stay resilient is the big question, right? And you have to provide product for that. And you have to provide infrastructures for that. Um, and, and this is a snapshot, but, but really uh, this tells you more of, okay, where my traffic is going to, that's important. Where my traffic is coming from, where my traffic is going, how I can optimize it. And so those are the value that you get. Okay, I need observability, we're gonna give you visibility. So there will be a lot of companies that are already growing to solve the visibility problem. Security, there is so many new companies in the security space that are also helping you secure your services, your containers, your APIs, and it's, it's kind of a new market, but you can see how it's growing. API security is becoming a thing on its own. It was, there was no API security a few years ago, but now you need it, because if you're gonna have a thousand of APIs, you're going to have a thousand of backdoors, and you have to protect them in a different way on how you used to protect the world before. And then operational efficiency. You don't want to write uh, an authentication over, over, over again, over 5,000 times, uh, or a read limiting or you don't want that to be even centralized because it would be a bottleneck and a point of failure. So you have to go decentralized, um, and you also you don't want the team to, to revend the will. So there will be company that will provide those kind of infrastructures to get you operational efficiency, even to the point that you will maybe reroute traffic to the, to the best endpoints at any given time, even if that wasn't originally your logic, but if you have the network system, they can figure it out what is the best traffic at any given time, and where we should route the traffic to which endpoints, based on, on traffic patterns. So all of that is becoming, now you can see how this is becoming really a massive organism that is powering companies behind. And, and this is a, a journey, and it's a, it's a very popular slide that, uh, that uh, uh, the, our company uh, really published a lot, and it got a lot of popularity, because it shows you the, the journey of, of, what, um, of what an enterprise is going through, okay? Um, any of a smaller company at a smaller scale, they have this. But historically, you, when you go to a prototype and you're fighting for product market fit, you're not gonna write in 5,000 services and be the master of, of microservices. There is no point. You just write a big JavaScript, Node.js, fast application and see if it works and if you get traction. And you probably run it on, um, on a Roku or, or wherever it is. And then if you get traction, then you start, okay, we have scaling challenge, and, and you start to decouple, you start to, to, to spread workload across different phase, different technology, and then you start to get all these kind of problems. So this is a journey too, because enterprise have been doing this, but on a massive scale. They have 99% of the workload, they're still on the left. And, and then, okay, we gotta go cloud, we need to go serverless for the next 20 years. Yeah, but you're not gonna go there tomorrow. You're gonna have new teams that do some of it, um, new project that do it, but everything else is still running more on the, on the number one. And so that too, it's a massive journey that all the companies will go through. And whatever happens next, um, we can talk about maybe, you know, what will happen after serverless. If you need, by the way, if you do serverless, you don't need service mesh, so it's kind of confusing. And then, and then you have service mesh, which is overlapping a lot with what you used to do. So th there is already a lot of overlapping things, and it just keep accelerating. But the point is, when you go from left to right, it's a 10 years journey, and you need infrastructure technology that helps you go from the left to the right. That's why API management is also dead, because API management is stuck in between the first two by usually offering an umbrella on top of your external APIs. Great, but, but there is a lot going on internally behind the scene. And so here you can see how you are decoupling a couple services, and you have an internal, uh, maybe broker and gateway, how you decouple more and more services, and you're maybe running on Kubernetes, so you have probably control planes there. If you're running on serverless, you don't need any of that before. Just run a function and forget about it, or whatever going on next. Uh, but we live in this multi-cloud, multi-technology, multi-architecture world, and it's not like one thing is right or not. It depends of, of the context of the team and the history of the company or the history of the business unit. So this is how we see a lot. And really, who will be able to kind of support them all would be the one that takes a lot of the space, and but probably that's how you can build uh, the network system of the cloud. Um, we haven't touched much about, uh, till now, about also what's happening uh, in terms of adoption of those technology. And 
originally pre-Kubernetes, pre-Docker, uh, pre-serverless, so the, where that was 2014 and 2015, that was the big shift where a lot of things happened. 99% uh, of the software was still really closed source. And, and uh, all the previous generations of API management, they also were closed source and they'll be acquired. And, and that was fine because there was a different culture. But nowadays, if you think about how infrastructure is getting built, it's prim the new one, it's primarily driven by open source technology. And this is also a, a change and shift in the culture because open source actually all the time is more secure than closed source. Uh, he gets a lot of virality, a lot of speed, a lot of adoptions. So if you look at all the new architectures, you can see a, a list of open source projects. This is how massive companies are built on top of open source shoulders. And, and because of that, the future too of how we build infrastructure is open source. There is no question about that. If you ask five, six years ago, it was still questionable and people will think there will only be one Red Hat at that scale. And now we can see how a lot of more and more open source companies are getting escape velocity and are actually becoming quite big on their own. This is, a, this is not just because it's a great product, but the market change. There's been a market shift on what do we need to build those future architectures. And we can't get any more um, a closed source black box in the middle of our mission critical architectures because we don't know what's going on. So one of the reasons is, going back to visibility, we need open to understand what's happening. We have a thousand different endpoints moving. We need to know in every path, in every device, in every service, what's happening. And I can't have something that is a proprietary and I don't know what's going on. So that's complexity at the infrastructure level is creating an open mindset to really understand what's happening at, at each place of the strap. That's why things like tracing are becoming more and more important over time in terms of visibility. You need tracing to understand what's happening end to end. You didn't need tracing uh, 10 years ago much, okay? So what we believe is in our API infrastructures of the future, I think open source is mission critical. And we will see more and more open source startup uh, that will, let, will support part of the markets in various shape and forms. And that's the way to go. The closed source, it's eventually not uh, going to have adoptions over time because that's not how the culture of, of an engineering is and the one to use open source. That's how the way it's going. There will be, you know, no millennials will probably buy uh, closed source software in their life. It's just a different mindset. So when that generation start to be in power, think about what change it will cause to companies like Oracle. No millennials buy it. <laughs> they, they will never buy it. So once they will go to power, there will be a massive shift on buying Porsches and, and there will be drop on existing uh, large companies because their, their customers changed and they don't have product to support their mindset. So this is a big thing. It's not just APIs. It's everywhere in software, right? And all the cloud giants, they also leverage a lot of open source to, to, to build that. This is um, a famous uh, slide on the cloud native uh, foundations. Uh, Kong is a, is a gold supporter of that. And you can see how this grows every year. So there is like, there is like everything for anything at this point. And they're all open source. And if I take this one and probably move it again five years from, from now, it would be maybe five times more this intensity. And we're really getting specialized at doing one thing really, really well in, uh, from security, from compliance, key management, observability, uh, Kubernetes monitoring, um, uh, analytics. So all of that, it just keeps growing, growing. So which is testament that that's where it's going and you can't stop it. That's open source. That's an open source uh, force that is changing the landscape. And on the API side, obviously on the infrastructure side, those are obviously example of open source company that have different stage, but have massive growth. One of the fastest growing enterprise company are actually uh, uh, open source. You can think about Ashicorp. You can think about Confluent, uh, which are the makers of Kafka. Uh, they have one of the massive uh, acceleration in business that we've ever seen, faster than SaaS startup of you know, the 2010-11 where there'd been the SaaS explosion. Now open source at the infrastructure level is growing even faster. So you can see how, how this is, uh, is uh, keep growing. And if you remember MongoDB, it was a very small company and a lot of people say, oh, it's just, just a database for 
for, for small projects, and now it's a massive $10 billion public company. And, and, and it's driven by, by the open source flywheel. So this is the way to also get to market, and it's the way to make customers successful. Also, you will ask, well, how that is all different than the SOA? Well, SOA was driven by vendors, and microservices is driven by developers. And that's why it's gonna work. You're not gonna use it if it doesn't work. It's like, crap, that's it, boom, out, right? But vendors, they give you, you know, all this big dream of this magic beans, and then you give the magic beans, and after three years, it doesn't work. And you lost three years. Uh, but with open source, what you see is what you get. Um, and that's how the traction you get, it's real. And it's bottom up driven. And that's why they're gonna here, and that's why they're here to stay. So this is a massive shift. So please, when you build, build and use uh, uh, open source, because you, you have long years ahead of success. And uh, the vendors, magic beans, are still kind of, you can complement with that, but ju just be real about. And thank you. One, one last thing, uh, which uh, the, obviously thanks Maddie for, for this. Uh, we have the Kong Summit in October 2nd here in San Francisco. So we, we in partnership, we created a, a good uh, coupon, API Day San Francisco, to discount it uh, by, by a lot. And uh, you're all invited to be here. Uh, there are going to be a lot of speakers. Uh, we're going to speak from the creator of Envoy, Matt Klein, uh, the CNCF uh, CTO. So it's not just a Kong summit. It's more about uh, general also microservice and serverless architectures. And, uh, and then really a good tell leadership of what is going to happen in building new and modern architectures. Not just also APIs, but also a large infrastructure. So you're all invited and, and please come. And, and uh, also if you have talk, maybe we can talk about bringing you on stage if you have some crazy idea of, of what you want to, to talk about it. Uh, but happy to all be welcome for this. Thank you.